So, we are going to create a wave with a lower amplitude. So I'm actually going to write right on top of the wave that is here. And I have one, two, three crests, and I'm going to try to maintain that. I'm going to try to keep those three crests. Big, huge goal on this. So lower amplitude. I'm going to go ahead and draw a rest position here just to help me so I stay kind of in the same spot. Maggie, can you see over that? Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to go one, two, three-ish. Obviously, I'm not going to be drawing it perfect. Okay. Yours might look a little bit different. That's okay. But it needs to have a lower amplitude. Experiment number two. Create a wave with a lower frequency. What is frequency? How often a wave occurs in a certain amount of time. So a lower frequency is going to be less crests and less troughs, yes? So I see three, so I know I need less than three at least. So I'm going to do about... I'm going to do my rest position again because I like to have that there. I'm going to go one, two. And I have two. I messed that up. Sorry. One, two. Do you have to make it like that high up? You technically should, and I actually learned this during second period today. That it technically should be because it says to change the frequency, not the amplitude. I taught myself that in class today, actually. What? Wow. Um, I would change it just since we're doing it together. Okay. This glare from this is ridiculous. Then it says, describe how the new wave will sound different from the original wave. So how will the new wave sound different? Now, we haven't talked about how a wave is going to sound yet. So, if a wave has more energy, it's probably going to sound louder. If a wave has a higher frequency, it's going to sound more like, eh, then it is going to sound like, lower. Yes? And like a, ooh, sound. Did you have something to say? I said it's going to be a lower pitch. Lower pitch. Okay, down and we're up here, okay. So, you can have something about a lower energy... Or maybe it's sounding quieter, which we don't really know now because we can't hear it, but it would sound somewhat quieter. What I really would want you to do is go through here and be like, okay, my wavelengths are different. Well, not really here, but my wavelengths here are different. Yes? Yes. So kind of pull out those things. If I have a shorter wavelength, what can I say about my energy? Go back to your notes. Shorter wavelength, more energy. So I'm going to say here I have a shorter wavelength, more energy. Okay? So something along those lines. You could definitely have some more stuff there for sure. I'm not going to go into super great detail over it. Reggie, can you, like... Put that down in focus, please. Okay, next part. Let's see if this will work real quick. So one study showed that low energy sound waves might be safer for marine animals than in the original wave. That's a lot of words for me. What I care about is low energy sound waves. Okay. Could either of the waves that you drew, so remember we drew on top of those waves, be used to test lower energy sound waves compared to the first wave that they gave to you? Yes or no? Yes. Which one? It doesn't matter. The first one. Yes, the first one is very easy to look at and notice, but they both can. Because in the second one, didn't we have a shorter wavelength? Yes. In the first, then the second? Get your graph, look at your stuff while I'm talking, but look into space or you're not going to learn. Did, was there a shorter wavelength in the second wave than in the wave we drew? Okay, so both of them, because we know shorter wavelength, higher energy. So yes, and which wave? And then kind of say why. We just kind of talked through that. So both of them could be tested. Yes, that's all that question was asking. 
And then number four was the harder questions. So I'm going to go through that one. Oh, So this one says, when you tested your sound waves in the ocean, each one had a lower amplitude than when you tested the sound waves in the air. This part we're going to need to break down for a second because there's a, a lot of information to this that they're asking you to know. You just have to take the time to actually know it. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to say, okay, if I'm talking about a medium, what are some mediums that we know about? Solid, liquid. Which one does sound travel the fastest in? Solid. Solid. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go fast to slow. And if you want to draw this graphic, you can too. It might help you later. Fast to slow. Solid liquid gas. Then it says your team tested. So this is a hypothetical. We're like, okay, so our team is actually doing this. And we say we have this wave and we were testing it in the air. And then we moved it. And we were like, okay, this one looks good. Let's actually test it in the water. We took this exact same wave and we put it into the water. So I'm just going to make up this wave because it is hypothetical and it didn't tell you specifically anything to draw. So I'm going to say here's my, my wave in the air, okay? And it says, but for some reason it had a smaller amplitude. And what did we just say? How Which one of these is going to move faster in? Solid. Solid. And what are we dealing with in these two scenarios? Air and water. Air and water. And I got my air drawn out. So it's going to go. Oh, I wrote this backwards. Oh, no, I didn't. Sorry. My water is going to move faster. So if I take this exact wave and I put it into the water, it is going to kind of move faster, which is in turn going to make it look like it's shrinking down because it's going into a different medium. But it's just moving faster. And that's a little tricky because you had to read the word problem and come up with that answer. And I don't think we were ready for that yet, honestly, and I kind of realized that today. So that's my bad. And then it says why. Well, here's your why. This is why it changes from the air to the water. And the main point of that question was asking you why would a wave look different in the air than it looks in the water? That's the main point of that question. They just asked it in a very difficult way. So this is a state lesson that the state actually put up. And we took parts out of it because it, it's a good idea. But when it comes down to it, all they wanted you to know from this was, do you know amplitude, do you know frequency, and do you know wavelength? And can you apply those in a real-life scenario? And 8th grade science is all about real life scenarios, so you will 